Our next stop is Segovia, home of a 2,000-year-old Roman aqueduct. Its Alcazar Palace obviously inspired Walt Disney. Students in the town square seem to be having a bit of a love-in. They give us heart-shaped suckers. Avila is often called the walled city for its perfect surround wall. It was also the home of St. Teresa. Then we chose to walk all the way around the two-mile wall. Our overnight town is Salamanca. It has the largest Plaza Mayor in all of Spain. It's also the oldest university town in Spain. <laughs> Repairs to an old church with a modern cherry picker draw a crowd. The church is right across the street from the famous Casa de los Conchas, the House of Shells. A slightly hazy morning drive takes us south to a smaller town, Caceres. Like so many fortified towns, Caceres is built on a hill, so rain has to be collected for water. Their cistern is still working. Rain falls on us, too, and on motorcyclists returning from races down south. By late afternoon, we're in Seville, where our bus takes us to the Plaza de España, down below there's a scene, there's a map, each, uh, each scene, a uh, collection of tiles representing a different province in Spain. This evening we've opted for a special night out, a dinner in a mansion. So I have some apples, the original furniture, and normally we would have dinner in the beautiful outside. In the morning, we head for the Royal Alcazar Palace. This is the room where Columbus was told he should head west to find China. The Moorish influence is obvious with all the tile and Middle Eastern design. We found the gardens here, the closest thing to Eden on Earth. The only thing missing here is the wonderful smell of the orange blossoms.
As we step outside the wall, we return to the hustle of the city and to the Plaza de España for lunch. The cathedral in Seville is the third largest in the world after Rome and London. In the morning, it's Jerez de la Frontera, home of most of the port and sherry in the world. The wine is blended over several years in American oak casks. They serve us generous samples and then let us back to our bus. Ronde is the ultimate hill town. They put themselves on a hill so high that they had to build a bridge to maintain supplies. That's 360 feet straight down. By evening we're in Granada and we take a night walk to see the Alhambra from below. The Alhambra is Spain's biggest single tourist attraction. Tickets are timed and rather difficult to get. The gardens are extensive and meticulously groomed. When we visited, the smell of the spring blossoms was almost overpowering. The road to Cordoba took us through miles of well-maintained olive trees. Cordoba's Mezquita is a large mosque with a church in the middle. The courtyard still has the water system which was used by Muslims for ablutions before prayer.
After two weeks on the road, we return to Madrid. trip with the Cosmos bus is to Toledo, once the capital of Spain. A modern escalator system takes you to the center of town. With the help of an expert guide, we find our way to the cathedral in the center of town. It's a confusing place, not really made for cars. El Greco's The Burial of Count of Orgaz remains on the wall he placed it 400 years ago. And Toledo craftsmen still maintain the artistry which made them famous. afternoon we're back in Madrid and visiting the Sorolla Museum and Studio. One last visit to Retiro Park brings a moment of excitement. Two mounted policemen suddenly take chase after what appears to be a purse snatcher. Non uniformed security guards join the chase. And the apparent culprit is caught. Our final morning in Spain, we spend walking along what was once the river, but is now a new park and playground. Just a few euros on the metro gets us all the way to the airport. And by evening, we're all the way to New York City. <laughs> 